I certainly welcome everybody here today, not only the parishioners of St. Patrick's, but your relatives who've come with you, friends, even neighbors, even people of other faith denominations who came to worship today together. It's been a wonderful Christmas. There were over a thousand people here in the church last yesterday afternoon for 430 Mass, and um, probably about 400 at the 10 o'clock Mass last night, and now it's such another large crowd. We all have one thing in common today. Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, and he was born into the world for us, and so we rejoice, we celebrate the great gift of God's love. Christmas touches the most beautiful in our lives and in our faith. What Christmas tells us is that God wants to be close to us, and he wants us to be close to him. So much does God love us that he sent his son into the world, even to, even to in the midst of our suffering and our poverty. He wants to be one with us, so much does he love us. We gather together today to say thanks to God for this tremendous, tremendous gift. If, this, if the figures in the nativity scene here at the altar could suddenly come alive, fuse your imaginations, what would they possibly say to us? Our Blessed Mother, for example, would she complain how rough it was riding a donkey across all that distance while she was pregnant on a bumpy road? Or would she be filled with joy <clears throat> because her child is born and all that difficulty doesn't mean anything anymore? Filled with joy that her son, whom she loves dearly, was born. She would be showering his little face with kisses, no doubt. Um, Mary um, looks at him with wonder and awe, knowing the angel said that he would be called the Son of the Most High, the God, Lord and God. Mary was filled with joy. And what about St. Joseph? Would he have been worried about them having to be in the stable on that night? Probably not. Joseph was a very trusting man and probably was very much at peace. He would say, probably, I did the best I could, and now I leave the rest to God. I find having to think about that a lot myself. Um, do everything I can, and it never seems to get done, and I worry. But I need to do the best I can and leave the rest to God. It brings peace in our lives. And the shepherds, <clears throat> they were the most um, on the low rung of society, they were the least important of the people. And what excitement there must have been in them to know, announce to them by the angels that their Lord and God and Redeemer was just a few feet away from them. Probably saying, who am I, sinners that we are? How can God come to me? But it tells us that God came into the world for everyone, the lowest of society and the greatest of society like the Magi from far away. He came for all of us. Pope Francis has declared this year to be a year of mercy, and he's opened wide the doors of grace for all, all of us. And that's why Jesus was born, to bring us his mercy, which is heartfelt compassion. If we need God's mercy, we need only ask. He's waiting to hear from us. And what about Jesus? What would he say? Well, he, he couldn't talk yet because he was just born. He's just a newborn baby. But from his divine side, would he be saying, looking around and saying, why did I ever do this? <laughs> or from his divine side, would he be saying, with, be filled with joy in his infant body, that he came to bring life and faith and hope to his people? I think that's the way it would be. And the infant Jesus is here to be in our hearts and in our minds and in our souls. What about the animals? They probably were excited about all the people coming and going inside the barn that night. <coughs> <coughs> Where they had wonder and awe because they knew they were before their creator, their Lord and God, who knows. It would be a stupendous miracle if these figures came to life. That just doesn't happen. But what is the miracle of Christmas? 
the miracle of Christmas is that God came to us so that we might become divine. He's going to raise us to a higher level of, of life, which is unheard of. He's going to give us supernatural life. We still remain human, but he shares his very life with us on a supernatural level, and that's the miracle of Christmas. And he promises us that we will have everlasting peace and joy in his kingdom of heaven one day. You hear people say sometimes that Christmas is for children. Well, it certainly is. But we get all excited, and, and certainly it's a great joy to see the kids get all excited about opening their presents and, and so forth on Christmas Day. And, and yet Christmas is also for adults. It's for everyone. They, there's caricatures which show sometimes the father playing with the toys that he gave his kids. I was reminded of that last week. I, there's a few boxes up in my room that I haven't opened since I moved here to St. Pat's. So I decided to open them up just to see what was inside. And the first one I opened, on the top there was an a engine from a Lionel train set. And it just made me smile. When I was six months old, my father bought me a Lionel train set. <laughs> And the only thing I have left is the engine. But my dad played with that train for years. <laughs> and I think how that's an example of the dad playing with the kids' toys. But I treasure it because it came from my dad. We come here tonight because this, this morning, I'm mixed up whether it's day or night, um, because we are so thrilled that the Redeemer has been born for us. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. The most mature and responsible and serious adults need to humble themselves and say that I need Jesus. Without him, my life has no purpose. Without him, my life can't be fulfilled. <clears throat> we all come from God, and we are on a path to return to God. And what made that possible was Christmas. The Savior came into the world to lead us and guide us to his eternal kingdom, and we need him. Our world needs him today, doesn't he? I just opened the plane dealer briefly this morning, and you see that the people in Bethlehem, of all places, are um, living in fear. Palestinians and Israelis, another conflict all around the city of Bethlehem. We need peace. Can God turn the hearts of terrorists to peace? Yes, he can. Nothing is impossible with God. But it's only going to happen if you and I pray. We have to pray that that happens every day, that there can be peace in our world. Bethlehem means house of bread. And the child is laying in a manger, which is a food trough for the animals. It tells us that Jesus came to be our food, a food for eternal life. From this altar today, we will receive the body and blood of Jesus. His body and blood is our food for eternal life. He came to feed us. And so we are so privileged to be here, um, to be here and being touched by him in that way today. It's not so distant. 2015 years ago, he was born in Bethlehem. But in the year 2015, he's here in St. Patrick Church. He's here to give us his body and blood food for the journey. And so it's a great day of rejoicing. When I see everybody gathered this uh, Christmas time for Mass, I'm so thankful to God for the miracle of St. Patrick Parish. And when I think about how it happened that this parish reopened, it was long, two years of prayer every day on the part of all of you. And what's sustaining it now is the faith of Jesus Christ in your hearts love for his church, and love for one another. And that's the miracle of Christmas for us that I give thanks to God today for. And so we thank the Lord to be able to be here, to enjoy um, one another's company, and most of all, to receive his body and blood in the Holy Eucharist. If Mary and Joseph could give us any advice today, they would say, love God above all things, with your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And if we do these things, we will fulfill the command of Jesus to be one with him forever.